the sleepiest, comfiest, coziest boy. So it'll be a surprise to me what we do in terms of color. Look who it is! That's the thing about nomad life that I didn't know would be so hard. Hi friends, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel for Vlogmas Day 3. I am just getting ready for the day. Sorry, deodorant's important. I am getting my hair done today. So I was like, I don't want to put heat on my hair. I washed it last night so it'd be clean for color. And I tried something new. Can't really do updos anymore because all of my hair regrowth doesn't stay up. I lost a lot of hair this last year if you missed it. And it's all coming back, which is awesome. Hard for updos. But this is Vlogmas, so I'll be taking you through the day. But the majority of this vlog will actually be a themed video. I've had a lot of people, I think a lot of people's New Year's resolutions are to like finally start a YouTube channel if they've been wanting to do it. So I'm gonna just do like a QA and talk you through all the things that have helped me start a channel and make it my full time job. I'm not gonna gatekeep any information and I'm excited to sit down and chat with y'all. But we're also going to go get our hair done today, maybe run a couple errands and maybe get my nails done because it has been almost a month. That's a thing about nomad life that I didn't know would be so hard <laughs> is finding time to get your nails done. I always try to do timestamps in my vlog. So if you're here just for the um, starting a YouTube channel, making money on YouTube part of the video, I'll have that timestamp down below and you could just skip to that part and watch only that part. Otherwise, this is also the rest of the vlog. So hello, glad you're here. Let's start with that little q and I'm gonna make the bed and um, get going. In my swing, let's get this little chat started. The most asked question, I screenshotted it first from y'all from Instagram, is just like, what is the bare minimum equipment? A lot of people said, what's the affordable, like just starting out without all the bells and whistles. And really, in my opinion, all you really need is a camera and an editing software. You don't actually even really need that, but I would say if you wanna like start off professionally, those are the two things, you don't really need to buy anything else to start. Lucky for you, I've gone through a lot of cameras and I am getting to work with Best Buy on today's video to link the exact equipment that I use down in the description box. So the links in the description will take you right to the cameras that I own and everything that you need and you can purchase it from Best Buy, which is super convenient and that helps to support my channel as well. First, I'm gonna tell you about the camera that I use. I use the Sony ZV-1F. I actually am filming on the Sony ZV-1. This is the Sony ZV-1F. They're very similar, but if you're starting out, I recommend this one because it is a lot more affordable and it does so many things basically the exact same. I have bought a ton of big, fancy, nice cameras, and I haven't even used those for the last two years. I do everything on this little guy um, because it's so compact. And honestly, I found that the quality is more consistent than my big, nice ones with interchangeable lenses. This is easy to throw in a bag. Another thing that I really like about this camera is there is a mic built into the camera if you want. This is a little like dead cat that comes with the camera that you can just slide on over here it helps to muffle the wind, but if you want, and this is hard to find on compact cameras like this, there's actually a little input for a mic. So all of my videos that I film, I also add a mic on top of this camera. So you don't have to put a mic on your camera, but it's really nice to have the option. And the Sony ZV-1F, just like the Sony ZV-1, has the little um, shoe, I think they call it, that you can screw in a mic to it and have like top tier audio. Another thing about buying a camera that's pretty essential if you're doing YouTube is you're filming yourself, but you're gonna have to check the frame and make sure everything looks good. So it's pretty essential to find a camera that has a screen that flips out like this. Also, I like that this camera, you can flip it backwards, you can close it up to where the screen's not exposed for travel, helps keep it protected. And something that's essential for me is you can carry it around just like this, but I find it's awesome to have a camera that has a spot that you can attach a tripod to it, whether you have like a big tall tripod that you set up in a room or just like a little handheld tripod because it helps to you know hold it a little bit further from your face. You can set it on a countertop and get vlog footage that way out and about in the public. So if you're starting out, I recommend this one, the Sony ZV-1F. The price point is really, really good. I just am blown away that I have spent four, five times as much on a camera and I didn't even like the quality as much as this little guy. He's a little power horse. So I will link him down in the description box if you wanna purchase that from Best Buy. And then in terms of editing software, my channel has evolved a lot over the years. I now have an editor, shout out to Tara, she's the best. Um, and she 
exclusively edits my videos on Adobe Premiere Elements. You can also purchase that through Best Buy. She can put a little screen of what that looks like if you wanna see kind of the behind the scenes of what editing a video looks like, but she prefers that. She says she can do so much more on that than any other program that she's tried. It's a good price point. I've paid for more expensive programs in the past and I was impressed with the price point of Adobe Premiere Elements. So you can get that through Best Buy as well. It's an automatic download. So you can just like buy it and have it pretty quickly on your computer without having to leave your house, which is really nice. And my biggest tip for editing a video, I edited all of my videos until probably year four or five of my channel, I had no experience. I just watched a ton of YouTube videos and I slowly learned over time. And it started off, you know, pretty, pretty simple. But over time I learned little new skills that I was able to put into my videos. And it was kind of fun to like continuously get better at something. I would recommend downloading Adobe Premiere Elements and just playing around with it, watching videos, learning as you go. And over time you'll be like, wow, I got really good at that really fast because it's pretty easy to catch on to. So those are the two things. I can also link that the mic that I have, it's honestly the cheapest mic. <laughs> I've tried some bigger, nicer mics. They're just not worth it and they're too big to carry around. So I'll link that as well. But I would say don't worry about buying lights or all those big things yet. If you're starting out, just get a decent camera and an editing software. And that's really all you need to get started. That's all I had for years and years. And then I bought more and now I've pared down and I'm kind of back to just those two things if I'm being honest. How to pitch for sponsors and affiliates on smaller channels. I feel like I should first start out, I screenshotted a different question of someone asking, how do you make money? Like what are the revenue streams actually for YouTube? And there's a lot, but I would say that there's three primary revenue streams. The first is going to be ad rev. And that is, you know, when you're watching a YouTube video and there's a commercial break, that's not the creator. It's just a totally different brand popping in like traditional TV that the creator makes a percentage of the ad. And the longer that someone watches that ad, the more that they make. So that's the first revenue stream. You become monetized after you have a certain number of um, subscribers or they, they call it a partner. You become a YouTube partner and you make that money when you hit a certain number of subscribers and watch hours. And that's the first revenue stream is ad revenue. The second is sponsorships. That makes up I would say 60% of my current revenue is getting to work with brands, just like I'm working with Best Buy on today's video. And how that works is they're like, hey, we want you to talk about the products that you like and just link it for us. And then we will also compensate you for that. And then the third is affiliate linking. Affiliate linking is like, if you notice in the description of my videos, I normally try to link everything I'm wearing. If I like use the makeup product, I'll try to link that as well. And sometimes you can link it through websites where you will generate a commission. Just like this camera that I'm linking for you, I'm also making affiliate commission by linking this. When I say, if you use my links, it helps to support my channel. By that, I mean, if you shop and it ties it back to me, I make a small percentage on the sales that I generate. So that's kind of like good old fashioned advertising. You can start affiliate marketing, linking things for um, a percentage of commission at any size. You can start that from day one. You just apply for affiliate programs and you don't have to have a certain number of subscribers or anything like that. So you can start making that money immediately. My biggest tip for this person's question, how to pitch for sponsors and affiliates for a smaller channel. I've been shocked at how many brands are so willing to just send you product if you want to feature them on your channel. Even if you have 50, 100 subscribers, even if you're brand new, just starting out, they don't have a lot to lose. So um, if you reach out to say your favorite t-shirt company and you say, hey guys, I'm starting out on YouTube, but if you'd be interested in sending me one t-shirt, I would love to feature it on my channel, talk about it for a couple minutes, link it in my description, and hopefully generate some sales for you. And they're not paying you at all. But the benefit to that is one, you start to get practice, and two, you're building those connections. So many of the brands that I still work with, I worked with them for years, and I've become kind of online friends with the people that manage their campaigns. Once I got to be bigger, I said, still love working with you. I'm now, you know, working on a sponsorship basis. So, um, I'll try to mention organically when I can, but if you'd like to do something more structured, like a one, two minute integration, these are my rates. And over the time I would just slowly increase my rates. And that's just a good way to get your foot in the door. Okay. This is the one thing that's going to be hard for me to not gatekeep, but I'm going to share it with y'all because it's also supporting a, um, creator and a small business. So what are the branding things that make it top notch, like your graphics and your transitions and all those types of things? 
I download so many of them from this girl. Her name's Haley Matsumoto. I'll link her, um, her website down below, but she's just a creator. I have paid for her to create me some custom things, like my last intro was custom, but the Vlogmas intro you see right now was like, I think 20 bucks for me to download all Vlogmas days one through 25. And she just has a great aesthetic um, and she creates things all the time. So little pop-ups that you see, all sorts of things I, I download from her. It's hard to find cute little branding things that like embellish a video. So she's really awesome. She has a lot of good resources. Um, and like I said, she's a creator in a small business. So if you want your videos to look exactly like mine, I pretty much download everything from her. <laughs> Do you have to have a manager to be successful? No, I didn't have a manager until this year. I am on year seven of doing YouTube and I managed all of my own campaigns. What a manager does is they basically just talk between you and the brand. So they'll negotiate rates, they'll negotiate contracts. They normally have like a legal background and or PR background. So we'll kind of help to, you know, talk through a lot more of the kind of like corporate side of YouTube once you start doing brand deals. And then they take a percentage usually, usually 15, 20%. I've worked with managers that take either. It's really nice to have someone to bounce ideas off of, someone that's been negotiating contracts for far longer than me. It feels like a safety thing. You don't need a manager at all, but they are great if you get to the point where you have, you know, a couple contracts a week that you just need to keep close tabs on because they are legally binding documents and you don't want to mess up something legal. How long did it take you until you were able to make YouTube your full-time job? I started YouTube at age 18. I quit my serving job my last month of being 22. So four and a half years later, that's when I made YouTube my full-time job. I'm now about to wrap up year three of doing YouTube full-time and I'm about to enter year four of doing YouTube full-time. So, um, you know, I'm seven and a half years into it. The first four years, I was working a serving job. I have a lot of creator friends that, you know, it took them two to six years before they were able to be like, okay, this is earning the same as my other job. I'm gonna quit my other job and just do this now and focus on it more. So that's generally, everybody's different, but those are the experiences that I've seen. How many videos a week would you say is a realistic goal for someone just starting? Honestly, one, but I would hold yourself to a consistent schedule. People like schedules, they like to know when you're gonna upload, and it's also good to hold you to a schedule so that you don't do it just because you don't feel like it. But I started off just one video a week for the first year, and then I moved to two videos a week, then I moved to three videos a week, and then in COVID I did four, and then I realized I didn't have a life, so I'm back to three. Tell us about the tax portion of having a YouTube channel. So you're basically self-employed. I have incorporated, um, so now I have an LLC, but with that, you don't have an employer that is withholding tax for you. You have to be mindful of keeping your own books and setting aside tax yourself. I file taxes quarterly, so once a quarter, I send in what I think I owe to the IRS, and I just set aside 30%. So if YouTube gives me $100, I put $30 into a bank account that I will send to the IRS each quarter. But that is a hard thing to keep track of. You have to have a, a software in place to keep track of your income and your expenses and be really diligent about setting aside taxes. How can I get over the fear of being judged? It's holding me back from my dreams. I get that. I will say that dealing with negativity is still the hardest part of my job, but being judged in terms of people just, you know, kind of thinking like, who does she think she is starting a YouTube channel? That for some reason has bothered me less because I think I recognize that the people saying that are the ones that are far too fearful to ever try something like that themselves. Embracing that mentality has helped me when, when I worry about people being like, here goes my gal with another video, thinking she's so cool doing videos. <laughs> how much does it cost to outsource talent? How do you decide which to do on your own? The first five or six years did everything myself. And once I realized that someone could do it better than me and I had the income to um, hire it out, I could produce better content, I could produce more content, and I could also, I was working like, way too much um, so I could have a better, healthier work-life balance. That's when I decided, okay, now it's time for me to hire someone out. 
My editor, Tara, has been the greatest person in my life. I wake up in a cold sweat sometimes thinking what life would be like without her. Um, but she has just elevated my videos so much and allowed me to have more time to be creative with what I really like, which is the filming, the creating of the content that way. And so I would say that that is when don't feel like you have to outsource right away because it, it does add up. Once you say, okay, I have enough to live off of and I'm saving a little bit, can I also afford to pay someone to make this better? That's a good time to consider doing it. Those are all the questions I screenshotted just for this little vlog, but I could do a total whole video on like the monetization aspect of it. If you wanted that, let me know in the comments down below. Maybe I could do that in the new year, but um, thank you to Best Buy for partnering with me on this video so that I can link the exact equipment that I have been using for the last couple years. I'll link this little cutie for you. And I will also link the editing software down below, Adobe Premiere Elements, if you need to download a software to start editing your videos. Um, like I said, YouTube is your best friend in terms of learning things as well. Those are, my, those are my biggest tips for starting out. This is very just like entry level knowledge that if you're wanting to do this in the new year, I hope it helps you a little bit. This is a fun little chat. I like to talk business and I like to sit on a swing. Yay! <laughs> I think I think the space buns are, are not lasting. I think I gotta do something else. But before we head out and run errands, something that I'm starting for the new year is a gratitude journal. I didn't quite finish today's yet, but every day writing down, you know, three to 10 things that I'm grateful for in the morning because I that's something that I just really wanna be better at. So actually Jordi and I, when we had our date yesterday in the last vlog, went to a bookstore and we got matching journals and we're gonna like challenge each other to do that every morning and then share them with each other as like a little gratitude accountability. And I'm looking forward to that. Let's go fix these nails at whatever nail salon is closest to my parents' house. I don't even know what that is, but we'll find out. Changed again, because I'm feeling kind of chaotic today, but I want to show you a couple things. First, I made this garland in Alabama. I don't think I showed it to y'all. Jordy's mom dried these oranges and then made these cinnamon stars out of just cinnamon and applesauce. And apparently you, combine cinnamon and applesauce and then cut it and bake it. And it like smells delicious and kind of bakes into little cookies. And so I made this little pattern of three cranberries and orange, three cranberries, a bay leaf, three cranberries, a star, repeat. And it was really cute. When we were out and about, one of my favorite spots in San Antonio to get coffee is called Local Coffee. Um, they're also called Merit in Austin. Jordy got me this cute little coffee mug. And it's awesome because it will fit in a cup holder because the only other ones I have don't have, they have handles so they don't fit. This is San Antonio, Texas. Sweet little Christmas gift. Came early. <laughs> color literally called pine green. So I feel like that's pretty perfect for Christmas. I'm, I'm gonna try to start seeing if I can make these last the month and get them cut really short when I get them done so that when they grow out, it's not as annoying because I don't mind if it's like visually not great if they're grown out as long as it just it doesn't feel too long. One of my best friends, Anna, I've gotten my hair done by her for years. Even when I was living in California, I'd fly back to get my hair done by her here. And she was at a salon in Austin, but she started her own salon in New Braunfels, which is like halfway between San Antonio and Austin. And it's so cute and I'm so proud of her. And this is my first time getting my hair done at her new salon. So if you live in either San Antonio or Austin or anywhere in between, it's gonna be like less than an hour from you. If you're looking for a good spot to get your hair done, and you live in any of those areas, you should go see Anna. She does a great job. I'm thinking about, like I said, getting more pieces, maybe to help the regrowth blend in a little bit better. And then I always let her do whatever she wants with color. It was a year ago today I went blonde, and then we kind of have been easing back into brown, and I don't know, I always let her have fun. <laughs> and she always does a great job, so it'll be a surprise to me what we do in terms of color. Just getting home for a bit, and somehow it is literally 80 degrees today, and tomorrow, it is literally 39 degrees. In Texas, I know I grew up here, but I don't, I don't remember realizing this as a kid. It's just every day is a different season. <laughs>
Lawrence and her sweet husband Skylar is making us all dinner. We're gonna do like Buddha bowls and sweet Lawrence cookies, but I wanted to show you. I have like curtain bangs now and like a face frame and I think it's gonna be so helpful for hiding all the little things that are regrowing underneath and pinning it up will be really fun too because I'll have all the little pieces that just kind of naturally come down and are a little bit thicker than it was before. So that'll be really fun to style and have up. And we went darker and richer. Look at that gloss. So it's nice to have some new kind of dark fall winter colors in there, some highlights as well. I really, really love it. Okay, I just wanted to show you before we all go do dinner and that kind of stuff, but I'll bring you all along for some of that as well. Yay! Look who it is! Um, Kaylee's and I haven't seen each other in we were just trying to calculate it and it made me really sad so we stopped calculating it but like way too long and too long. i'm sure the vlog misses you so much so i might get to see everyone. you twice this week no absolutely but the other day yeah. i'm not vlogging so the vlog only gets to see you once this week yeah you only give me once yeah. <laughs> <For the rest laughs> you only give me once for the rest of the year I just, um just and, and anna and skylar made such delicious food Skylar, thank you. Buddha bowls with rice and chickpeas and sweet potatoes and avocado and greens. Chef de la Skylar. Hello. Hello, baby. It's fun to see my hair in different lighting. I'm excited to see it in the sunlight tomorrow and like it just styles on an everyday type of style and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like I'm officially, officially brunette again, which is kind of fun. I was like easing back into it. It's late, it's almost midnight. I am so tired. I'm gonna do a little computer work shower and get ready for bed. So I wanted to end the vlog here. I wanna say thanks again to Best Buy for partnering with me on this video. Like I said before, I'm gonna link excuse me i'm gonna link this bad boy for you as well as the editing software um if you're curious about that but thank you for spending the day with me i love you and i'll see you for vlogmas day four Good night. drove to the suburbs with our christmas lists waiting for parking you gave me a kiss